So in this lecture, we talk about ray diagrams for concave mirrors. So we got to focus on three points of the mirror. So you have a concave mirror. So this is a concave mirror. You have the pole of the mirror. Now pole is the geometric center of the mirror. Then you have the focus of the mirror. And then you have center of the mirror. So center is nothing but the center of the circle whose part the small part of the circle is the mirror. So if this length is F, this is distance of the focus from the pole is F, then center from P is at a distance of 2F. So this we have already noted before. So we start with case one. So in case one, we have an object, an object is placed on the left side of the center of the mirror. So you have the ray. So you have a ray going from the object. So this ray is going from the object. It is parallel to the principal axis. So this is the principal axis. So we have said this before also. Principal axis joins P and C. So this P and C, the line passing through these two points is the principal axis principal axis. So this object, there is a ray going out of it. So this ray is going parallel to the principal axis. It strikes the mirror here and then it gets reflected back. And since this ray is parallel to the principal axis, it will pass through the focus of the mirror. The second ray, which is in black, this goes through the center of the mirror. So any ray which passes through the center of the mirror and then it goes to the mirror and gets reflected back, it gets reflected along the same path. So again, any ray which passes through the center of the mirror and goes to the mirror, it will get reflected along the same path. So it gets reflected along the same path. So these two rays, the ray in orange and the ray in black, both of them intersect right here. So you can now draw the image of the object. So notice that these rays are cutting below the principal axis. So the image of the object is inverted. So we have drawn the object here in blue. So this is the image of the object. So notice that the object is inverted. Now we go to case number two. In case two, we have placed the object at the center. So you have center here, you have focus here, you have pole here. So now again, the object emits say two rays. So the first ray goes parallel to the principal axis. It touches the mirror. Since it is parallel to the principal axis, when it gets reflected, it goes through the focus. The second ray, which is in purple, it goes through the focus. So it is going through the focus. Then it touches the mirror and gets reflected. Now when it gets reflected, since it was going through the focus, it will be parallel to the principal axis. So this is the principal axis. And this ray is going parallel to the principal axis. The ray in purple is going parallel to the principal axis precisely because it is going through the focus. Now both this orange ray and the purple ray, they intersect right here. So you get the image of the object. So notice that, that the image is also formed at the center and it is exactly the same as the initial image, but it is inverted. Now we talk about case number three. So in case three, the object is now placed between the center and the focus. So this is the focus and this is the center. So again, the first ray goes parallel to the principal axis. It gets reflected from the mirror. So since it was parallel to the principal axis, it will pass through the focus. The second ray passes through the focus. So since it passes through the focus, it will get reflected and it will be parallel to the principal axis. 
So this line is the principal axis here. The line joining C and P, the pole of the mirror. So these two ray, the ray in green and the ray in orange, they intersect right here. So you get a image of the object since these two rays are intersecting below the principal axis. You can see that the image is inverted. Now we first do case number four. We place the object before the focus. So you have the center here and the focus here and you place the object right here. Now the first thing is that you have a ray in this orange which goes parallel to the principal axis so it touches the mirror it gets reflected and it goes through the focus of the mirror the second ray we are making it go to the pole of the mirror so this is the pole of the mirror so again a very important point a ray which goes to the pole of the mirror will get reflected at the same angle so that means if this ray makes an angle theta so there is this ray this ray is going to make an angle theta here then it will also get reflected at an angle theta so therefore we are going to point P and then getting reflected again at angle theta so therefore you can see that these two rays are not meeting you know this blue blue ray is going in this direction and you can see both these rays are diverging so the image is not formed on the left side of the mirror so no image is here so there is no image on this side but if you converge the rays towards the back side of the mirror so you go towards the back side of the mirror like we are going right now so if you go towards the back side of the mirror as we are going right now so this is how this blue ray will go and then we are going with the orange ray and both these rays intersect right here so we see the image behind the mirror so this is the image we see behind the mirror so this was the original object this is the image now this kind of mirror is often used in makeup you know so so the makeup mirrors are like this because if you are closer to the mirror then you can see a magnified image of yourself behind it so magnified image of your face behind the mirror so the last case which we consider put it as case number five is that the object is placed at the focus now if the object is placed at the focus then first you take a ray which is parallel to the principal axis it will get reflected and will pass through the focus the second ray is incident at the pole so it goes to the pole so it makes an angle theta here then it will get reflected by the same angle theta and then you will see that these two rays the ray in orange and ray in blue this are both parallel to each other so they do not intersect either here or behind the mirror therefore there is no image in this case so there is no image either in front of the mirror or behind the mirror notice in case 4 there was no image in front of the mirror but there is an image behind the mirror we finally talk about convex mirrors now so in convex mirrors the radius of curvature is right here the focus is right here and the pole of the mirror is right here so here is the pole of the mirror so we have only one case in some sense that because we can only place the object on this side of the mirror so mirror is like this and the radius of curvature of the mirror is positive as you can see it's on this side so this is the object in green so you have the object right here so the first ray this is coming out in orange this comes out it strikes the mirror and it tends to diverge in this direction and as we have mentioned before if you trace back its path 
you will see that this seems to be coming from the focus. So this is coming from the focus. The second thing is that if you take the ray which strikes the pole of the mirror so this is the principal axis it makes an angle theta with the principal axis the incident ray then the reflected ray will also make an angle of theta with the principal axis so this is the reflected ray now you can see this is the reflected ray is in blue this is the orange ray which is another reflected ray and they don't seem to be meeting anywhere on the left side of the mirror so if you trace back their path so if you trace back the blue path you will see that it intersects with this orange ray at this point so you have an image which lies behind the mirror so this is how the image in a convex mirror would look like so let us like write this down this is the image in a convex mirror so this word convex comes from the surface so the surface is convex and that's why we have the name convex mirror